Hi, this is Adriana, and I would like to share about a book that um, it's called The Future of the Mind, that was the number one bestseller in 2014, and it was written by physicist Dr. Michio Kaku, who is the co-founder of the string theory. In this book, he also shares about the research that was happening back then about the brain and all the history, all the background that um, led up to all this research around the world. Let's listen to what he has to say. You learn karate by pushing a button. Is that possible? Uploading memories was done last year for the first time in world history. We recorded a memory and we reinserted and uploaded that same memory and it works. Here's how we did it. On the upper left, on that red dot, you see the hippocampus. That's where memories are formed. If you, if you damage your hippocampus, you cannot remember anything. You forget as soon as someone talks to you. You basically relive that same conversation over and over and over again. There's a movie about that, 51st Dates with Drew Barrymore. It's based on a true story. Also, uh, Groundhog Day with Bill Murray. These are true instances of people who have damaged the hippocampus. So at Wake Forest University, in North Carolina, they took a mouse, trained the mouse to sip from a bottle of water. Then they recorded, they recorded the message that is whizzing through the hippocampus. Then the mouse later forgot the task. Then they reinserted that memory into the hippocampus and bingo, the mouse remembered immediately. So at MIT, they did the same thing. They duplicated at MIT and even inserted a false memory into a mouse. The next goal is primates. They're going to be uh, tape recording, for example, a monkey eating a banana, for example. They'll tape record it and then reinsert it perhaps into another monkey. And then the short-term goal is a pacemaker, a brain pacemaker for Alzheimer's patients. That's the short-term goal. Think of the millions of people who will have Alzheimer's wandering the streets, not knowing where they live, not knowing uh, who they are. We're going to have on the upper right a brain pacemaker. You push a button and it uploads the memory into your hippocampus. And then beyond that, who knows? Maybe you can upload the vacation that you never had. <laughs> or Arnold Schwarzenegger will upload the marriage that he never had, okay? The, the implications are incredible. College students will be able to take all the courses they flunked when they were in college. Workers will be able to upgrade their skill sets as automation gradually takes over many jobs. And if that's not amazing, we can actually photograph a thought. This was once considered impossible, and now we do it at Berkeley, where, where I got my PhD uh, years and years ago. What we do is we put the brain in an MRI scan, and we analyze blood flow. We calculate 30,000 dots, and then we analyze these dots with a computer to create a picture. Now, this is an MRI machine on the left. They are huge, gigantic. You cannot put one in your living room because it would collapse the floor. But on the right is the world's smallest MRI machine. It is the size of a briefcase. And how small can you make an MRI machine? Believe it or not, according to the laws of physics, the smallest MRI machine is this big. You will have in your cell phone the power to see inside your body. You will have more power in your cell phone than in a modern university hospital. So what do we do with it? We take the brain, analyze blood flow, create 30,000 dots, which is not very much. A picture has maybe a million pixels. So we take these 30,000 dots, put it into a computer, and bingo, a picture emerges. These are some of the first pictures ever taken of a thought. On the upper left is when you look at a picture of Steve Martin. Next to it is a computer recreation of the thinking process of the mind deciphered by computers. And you can see that it's not perfect. Well, hey, it's only 30,000 pixels. A typical picture would have hundreds of thousands to millions of pixels. And you can clearly make out animals, people's faces, airplanes. And then when you go to sleep in the MRI machine, which is rather difficult, but if you go to sleep in the MRI machine, it prints out a picture of your dream. And in Germany, they did the first experiments on lucid dreaming. Another old wives' tale. Lucid dreaming is when you are awake when you dream. You know you are dreaming as you dream. You can actually change the direction of your dream. How many people in this room have had an episode of lucid dreaming where you were dreaming and you knew you were dreaming? Raise your hand. Well, that's an old wives' tale, right? We proved it. At Max Planck Institute in Leipzig, Germany, they took a lucid dreamer, 
put in him an MRI scan as he dreamed, and sure enough, he could control the direction of his dream. He was awake while he was dreaming. One day, you'll wake up in the morning, push the videotape button, and you'll see the dream you had last night. And of course, if you have a second wife, hopefully the first wife's name will not pop up uh, in that videotape. Quick cause problems. Well, there you have it. Just a little bit of what uh, he explains in his book. I hope you enjoy it. And I really hope you um, read the book. It's very, very interesting. I read it years back. And of course, all this research have improved and there are more books about it that just look look them up thank you for watching bye